Hey everybody, what's going on everybody? Hey everybody, everybody. Take two. <laughs> Take, see, we always do two at a time because the second one's the fun one. So, God's army. Well there, young man. That's scary. Or, Yo! is, it, or is it God's sarmy? It's God's sarmy. Or is it go sarmy? I don't know. Maybe. Or I is it go czar my? I don't know. Let me call and ask my friend Brew Swillis. Anyway, yo, well, I'm looking at getting some mods for games. What are some good suggestions on places to start? Hashtag safe space. What's that mean? I'm sorry. What does that mean? We do not have hashtag support on our website, so... Well, but what does that mean? I have no idea. So the first Nexus place to mods? start your Nexus Mod Manager... Go, well, I wouldn't download that. I'd download... What game do you want to play? Skyrim? How well, about... yeah. It's like, you know what? If you want to mod um, Call of Duty on your Xbox, ain't happening. All right. So mod database, moddb.com. And then what you'll do is you'll go in there and you'll put in the game, whatever it may be. Um, Half-Life is a really good place to start because everybody's got Half-Life, one or two... So look at some I mean, source. Gary's mods. got one. Gary's got one. Good old Gary. So well, Gary's mod is, is an interesting place to start. Take a look at that. If you're if you're into Minecraft, there's plenty of Minecraft mods, and those are usually elsewhere. I would go to ModDB. Mm -hmm. Look at some source engine mods, depending on your your style of gameplay. If you like games that are more like RPGs and The Witcher and like all the uh, uh, Bethesda games and that sort of thing, go to the Nexus. Just type. Nexus mods, and it'll bring up a whole list of games. Everything from well, even the, what's that? What was that game? That uh, really good old school dungeon crawl game. My brain is gone. Where, Skyrim. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was like that a, was a lot it of was, mods. It was one of the old school games. Kind of reminded me of like I have the Beholder or uh, uh, are we Dungeon talking like Master. Dungeon hack. No, no. It was it was very very good graphics, and you move like one screen at a time. Uh, was it like a more modern game? Yeah, very modern. Oh, uh, we're talking. Uh... Shit. This is me milking a cow. Right now, while you're trying to figure that out. Dungeon. I'm just gonna keep milking this cow. There's two of them too, and I just totally mm -hmm. lost my mind. Here we look at that. Oh my god, the fucking internet. Look what you can do with the internet. So the the Nexus mods. There's the, the Nexus, mods Nexus, for Dragon Age? Yeah, there's mods for Dragon Age. Like, yeah. You can get total texture packs. Uh, the Witcher one, you can get great texture packs. Already some good mods for Fallout 4. Skyrim, you can it make. Needs it. You can turn Skyrim into one of the best games ever. You can make Morrowind more modern. Morrowind is the best Elder Scrolls uh, game out there. You can get Deus Ex mods. Uh, what was it? What was it? Uh, not um, Nethrim is your album. What the hell is it? Damn. Nerim. Nerim. Nerim is an amazing mod for Oblivion. And it it it's not even total conversion. It's it's Nerim is a. Uh, it's German. It's a mod by definition, but it's basically using the game. As a and the assets from the game to make an entirely new game. It's not even the same game anymore. Yeah, they just basically used the engine to make a new game. Exactly. It's it's like what Dota was to Warcraft Three. Um, I would recommend these over Steam. I don't like the way Steam manages things almost invisibly. This will give you a little bit more background, and you'll be able to do the modding yourself. Uh, some mods are available in Steam, and you can grab them that way. I cannot think of the name of this damn game, and it's crazy because I was playing it the other day. There's some good mods for it though. <laughs> that that game. So anyway, this I, I will probably start here and mod DB. So I mean, I'll bring up mod DB. And there's so many things on mod DB. Isn't Brutal Doom on mod DB? Brutal Doom is on here, and this they're also really rated awesome. by the community. There's a comment system. Uh, I, I really, really, I, you know what? The thing about mods is they bring back a quirky era of gaming that we used to have back when games, uh, original console games like Atari and Nintendo. Where it was just a bunch of nerds in a room where the corporate assholes had no idea what was going on in there and they didn't really even care until all of a sudden they're like, these guys are making money. What the hell? These guys are making money. And they were making really weird games. And we were playing them and going, this is cool, man. This is cool. Now, True here story. it's the same thing. You've got a bunch of quirky nerds in a room working on a mod because they want to, not because someone's paying them to do it or anything like that. They want to make whatever. They want to make this game. They want to make... Uh, these are all just updates. They want to make... Uh, the Euro Truck Simulator 2 multiplayer. They want to make that. That's not a very good example. but No, actually, that's a great one, because whoever's got weird. such a passion for Euro Truck Simulator, and they want to play with their buddy, so they made a mod that now allows it to have <laughs> net support so they can play with their buddy. Either that, or they've got a co-pilot, and it's really just two people sitting at the same keyboard, one yelling at the other. I don't know. But you can get some really 
quirky, interesting stuff here that normally wouldn't be made, and it's made by the community. So I would I would take a look there and you know look at the reviews and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes it's just as simple as doing something like fixing a game like Stalker Call. Legend of Grimlock. Grimrock, yes. So glad you said that. Good good mods for that game too. I'm like it's right there in my brain. I just had to dig it out and. This year, I've put more time into mods and modded games than I have anything else by about a factor of 10 to 1. I still think that's where the true innovation and the true creativity is. And then a lot of those mods turn into games like Counter-Strike and Team Fortress 2 and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, again, Dota, League of Legends. I mean, that was all... Yeah. Like I said, Dota was originally a mod for uh, Warcraft 3. Yeah. And we need... we need. I, I, can I go on a two-second rant? Who cares? It's our fucking show. We can do whatever we want. We need to keep mods free because mods are a labor of love. It's about the passion of making this. It's not about monetizing. If you start doing that, you're going to poison it. After you make something completely innovative and amazing, then you can commercialize it afterwards. But initially, I think mods need to stay free unless you're making a commercial game and have backing. That's different. But I, if, I, I if, love free mods. It's it's I don't know. See, there's there's two sides to that. One of it's we're getting into some things. Here. I know, I know, and we're gonna keep this nice and short. Yeah, but like, okay. you look at like Dota. If the problem with Dota being a, they made it and then they released it to the wild, well, once it's out there, the only people who could play it were people who had already bought Warcraft Three. Well, you yeah. couldn't just play Dota without buying Warcraft Three, or you could steal it. But uh, you know that just makes you a criminal. Criminals. Yeah, uh, but then go Dota hell. Two. I don't know. Is Dota Two free to play? Or yes, is it... Dota Two is free to play. So, but but they monetize it by you, know, you buy like outfits or something. Hats and I don't know. Like I say I don't play. I don't play either of them. My point is though, Hats is that and Dota and glasses was and made was yeah. made as like a hey, let's just goof off and make this thing, and there you go, and we call it something. And it's great. Woo, and people like it. And League of Legends makes a lot of damn money, and it's the exact That's same. Amount of money. Yeah, people will say it's not the same game. It's I don't know. It's like saying Modern Warfare, uh, Call of Duty, and Battlefield are all the same game. And in all reality, they're they're all war games. Yeah, there's different nuances. I feel like the the, the MOBA genre has fewer. Okay, I got something for you. Ready for something? The MOBA genre is the reggaeton of gaming. <laughs> they're all different songs, but if you if someone drives by and they're playing one of those games, all you hear is do 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 do. So, what does MOBA actually stand for? Was it Massive Online Battle Arena or something? Or is it something else? I don't know, Mother's Other uh, Bastard Assholes. Anyway, let's just get let's on to the next get, thing here. Yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying this, and I hope you haven't slit your wrist yet. There'll be a threat coming at the end, so stay tuned, you bastards. Or else. Yes. <laughs> Premature threats. Custom Tech CPU Cooler Cell. I just ordered the Linus Tech Tips Custom Fans. I needed new fans soon anyway oh you're trying to justify it on our website so that would be cool to have whatever okay anyway <laughs> yeah. so then i thought <laughs> tech syndicate him. sold any branded hardware like the mayflower objective 2 he's a label whore he is uh i would buy what's his name jacob frazier jacob frazier you I... label i like your fucking avatar look that's... at that that's awesome that can i have that as a t-shirt did you draw that yeah because that's kind of awesome where'd you get that anyway let's go back go back to his I want question jacob frazier on my shirt i, I want a jacob frazier fan on in my computer. Which one is that? Is that so the... That's a Corsair H some uh, probably an H one hundred one ten. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell from just the picture there. Uh, this is the rounded cooling unit. I forget. I don't know them all off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was pretty good. I mean, if, if... That, that's appropriate. Uh, what? what I, don't okay. like my, I don't like my face being on things. What? What if we just made a whole series of stickers that you could just slap on the top of your cooler? Would that be cool? They would melt. Um, see, the thing about this is is that, yeah, you know what, we can go in and work with them. I mean, we, we've even had, I can't even say who, but we've had some manufacturers out there come to us and be like, hey, you want to do like a branded thing with, with, with us? And I've just been like, okay, I guess so. Maybe we'll we make like a dollar per unit they sell, which could be a substantial sum of money, and maybe we, we will it someday. But I like having total control over things. I don't like just slapping our name on it. I like being able to go and say like, we want this, we want it done this way. Because these reasons, and I'm not, yeah, because if opposed we, to it, it but the, the problem really with that is if we, you know, we start licensing, uh, you know, tech syndicate and the logo to these companies, and they make something that's really crappy, um, that could just be a really fatal mistake for us, you know. That waters down my whiskey is what it does. 
And we don't want to drink watered down whiskey at the tech. We don't want our brand to be watered down whiskey. Maybe was the answer, I guess. Yeah. In one word. So this is from the Yellow Tub. Seriously? I don't even want to know what that means. No, he's, it's a tub. It's like a cloth. I guess it's just painted, bathtub. painted yellow. Okay. What's the that? What is? Tub. What is this? I don't want to know. It's a half life. How do people image. get their names? Okay, I would love to see a uh, see washed with guests from other channels. My first suggestion would be Alpha Omega Sign. Is that how you say it? Yep. Sin. Sin. I don't know. Um, he has a beard and likes metal. It's a match made in hell. hell. Uh, dude, I, that guy's metal as fuck. I like him. Have you ever seen any of his videos? Nope. He basically rants mostly uh, uh, about games and that sort of thing. He's a pretty well-spoken, intelligent individual, very anti the whole SJW thing because he comes at things from a logical standpoint and tries to get out of the whole um, nonsense. So he's making a lot of videos about that recently. But I wouldn't mind having him on because he seems pretty knowledgeable in the world of gaming. So I'm totally okay with him. I would love to have Boogie on because he's an interesting individual as long as we're not like getting too, too into the personal stuff. I, I, I like to keep our stuff more about technology and less vloggy um and he's got both I, I actually guilty pleasure i actually watched some of boogie's vlogs like where he's talking about like personal shit and he's one of the only that i can actually stand most people when they're talking about like you know like life is rough type stuff i'm like he has a interesting way of like talking about different personal no, things I, I've while seen a couple also taking his. a broad perspective on it. Oh, yeah, he he's uh, I I've watched a couple of his. Uh, I would have uh, it. I would love to have him. It'd on. be cool. I'd like to see him around. Uh, who else? I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind having a couple people on there uh, on Wazd and just letting them you know chit chat about games and that sort of thing. But maybe a longer episode. But maybe you guys yeah. would like it. I don't, or maybe I'm maybe, okay maybe you know at that point maybe we might even go to a point where we'll start uh, grabbing some people to do some interviews with on on the tech. I don't know. The stuff that we have talked about previously. It's just not. Uh, it's it's not on the table yet. It's premature because we are yet to move from this tiny office. That's a lot of the problem right now is we're in this tiny office in a very stressful period where we're trying to move our office to Portland. And I cannot wait, but it's like my stress levels are have higher than they've ever been. It's crazy. This place is so small. I sleep on the floor in here. It's ridiculous. Like, I can't even believe we're working in this tiny We're room. filming this. It's keeping me awake at night. Hi there. If you read this, you're awesome. Thank you. This guy, this guy's good at stating the fucking obvious. Uh, I've been watching the tech for two years now, and what many viewers and I really miss from early episodes is the Blazer. Is that a Chevy? Uh, the Blazer? Yeah. The Trailblazer? Is that what it is? The Blazer? Just a Blazer? Well, there's a Chevy, Chevy Blazer. Blazer? The Trailblazer? I thought the Trailblazer was a Toyota. I don't remember having one of those in the show. I don't, I don't even know. I don't drive. It suited Logan uh, much more than his. Neck beard hillbilly look that he's aiming for. Now you call this hillbilly? Hillbilly? Uh, what a neck beard hillbilly? That's like saying. Uh, how does he hold know on, I'm, I can't even. How does he I, know I'm not wearing shoes? It's like saying Californian Valley redneck backwater Yankee. It's like that's neck beard hillbilly. <laughs> I'm picturing like Amish boy with like coveralls, no shirt, no shoes, no socks, a straw hat, and just like this beard that goes out from here and nothing else on that's his face because like he can't that's grow That's the it. next, this is the next hit on Discovery. We need to be pitching Discovery Channel. We've got this amazing show about a technology crew called the Neckbeard Hillbillies. And Discovery would be like, do they have beards? Do they talk funny? Do they do something crazy? And they're just going to send Why them a Discovery bunch. Why does Discovery Channel sound we're like just going to send them a bunch of episodes of the tech. <laughs> They won't. They won't buy that. They need like <laughs> speed. They need something that's really fast, like us, like outside, like digging holes and and then like cut to us talking on camera, being like, "Yeah, we were outside digging a hole, and Peter comes up with some drama bullshit, and we was talking about some ducks and some alligators, and then some other drama happened, and I don't know if my dad's gonna like it. We fist fought." And last then you're night. gonna hear from like way back in the damn isn't you're like, "Hey, Earl." From like way over yonder. Hey, you gotta check this thing out. And he's gonna have like this huge like RC like remote drone controls doodad. And, and then, he's gonna hit a couple of buttons and this gun turret's gonna come up and he's like, let's go duck hunting. Somebody, and, he's gonna blow a whistle or he's whistling this through his like two fingers in his mouth and this dog's just gonna go running off into a field. Ducks are gonna go up and you see the gun just go. And then it's gonna cut to his wife being like, I didn't know he was like this when I first married him. I knew he was pretty handy and good with technology, and he wrote this little, this little thing. She's, she's going to be plucking the duck feathers. He's a big Star Trek this. fan. <laughs> Discovery Channel, Sunday night. National Geographic. 
I don't know, one of the two. The space cat has it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I'll wear whatever I want, but I I like the the brazier. I rock the brazier. You know, I always found that you it's usually hot. you usually you really put that on here. when there was something more uh, more serious. But you, he's right. You've been kind of like you know. It's been on. okay. I, I moved to Seattle. It's really hot here. Like even now, people say it's cold. It ain't cold. People walking around wearing. A, a sleeping bag with a hole for their arms and head. Late at night it's when we're hot. filming this, and it's like 10 degrees Celsius outside. It's freaking hot. And that's that's like an oven. Well, I think it's like 6 degrees tonight or 5 degrees. It got down to zero a couple days ago, but even that, oh, it's 8 degrees Celsius. I was rounding up. Yeah. And the rounding up in Celsius is a lot of rounding. Um, okay, mm. so this is about Fallout 4 from Rob Stark there. What do you guys think about Rob Fallout 4? I don't. I haven't played it yet. I've got this really awesome Pit Boy that I keep like drooling on and laughing about, and then I just my phone doesn't fit in it, so I haven't played it yet. I've played it for an hour, so I'm not qualified to speak about it. I do not play Bethesda games until they're heavily modified by the community. Some people will like play it vanilla first. I'm like, screw that. I'd rather play it the right way first, and the right way to play a Bethesda game at this juncture is to play it modified. So... I have been reading a few things about how uh, New Vegas had a lot of character, but, I, you know, I'm not exactly... I can't state my full opinion yet, but he does say that New Vegas was a huge disappointment to him because the, he didn't like the story and all. I thought it was a bit silly. Um, I thought New Vegas had lots of nuance and character. Whether or not the major story arc was as dynamic and interesting, I wasn't really... I didn't really care about the major story arc. I'm, I play the games... those games... Anyway, the sandbox style games like that, more for the individual moment to moment and the, the characterizations and the quirky stuff that you find. And I thought that, you know, have, having some of the original guys from the Fallout world working on New Vegas, some of the Obsidian guys and that sort of thing, I think that made the character, it just really, it was it felt like a much better universe to me than any Bethesda game. Uh, Bethesda games are usually clunky and interesting, but I... I, I I liked what they did with New Vegas the best. I mean, so even far. if even if you look at the original Fallout and Fallout Two, because I always go back to these, because those are my like those games have those, so much ridiculous stuff. Those are my controls, my my control groups for for Fallout Three, New Vegas, and and soon to be Fallout Four. Uh, but you look at Fallout One, you know the original story, the, the the story arc. If you just play, if you were able to like take a character and make him super strong, the goal is he's got to go find a water chip and bring it back to the the thing, and then go kill some mutants. That's it. That, like, that's the whole story arc for the main storyline. And then the rest of everything that's going on is you experiencing the sandbox of the world and what's going on, where you can go, and the missions you can do, and all this other jazz. It's experiencing the world between point A and Z and getting that thing and getting back, and the, the journey you take to get there. Uh, now, with, with, with New Vegas, you can very linearize that down to where you do a very specific set of things and you don't experience the world. And I think that's the, where I think I had a problem with Fallout 3 and uh, uh, New Vegas, was that if you just stick straight to the initial storyline, there is not a lot of deviance, or you know, it doesn't doesn't deviate from that story. You have to intentionally yeah. go out of you your know, way. With Fallout 1 and 2, just by going that path, you're discovering, and there was it was a lot of deviation from the main storyline. You can get lost. You can forget what you were doing if you weren't careful, and that would actually cause a problem, and you'd get a different ending. Here, um... Thank you. Yeah, you're looking a little low over there. You know, I haven't actually completed a Bethesda game since Daggerfall. But I've put... Possible... What is it? That looks old, man. That's yeah, like yeah, I, was, I thought it was when... the bourbon. I was like... Just oh, switch, no, I was just switching waiting for it bourbon. to... Give me my voice down here. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to be a Discovery Channel show again if we're not careful. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't... Uh, Daggerfall was old. Uh, I played the hell out of Arena. I never actually beat the quest, the main quest in Morrowind, but I put probably 800 hours into Morrowind. Like, literally. Um, Skyrim, I put more hours into that than Oblivion, even though... Oh, I, I beat Nevrim. I beat Nevrim, which is the overall... The, the uh, overhaul... For Oblivion, but I didn't believe beat a Obliv beat Oblivion. It's getting the best of me. Finally, finally, um, I don't see any reason to beat those games. the The main reason I play them is for the world and the sandbox experience and just being able to run around and do anything I want. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway. So my thought on Fallout Four is I don't have one. I just hope it's is. Uh... <laughs> we we say a hell of a lot to say nothing. Really, yeah, no, because you know we have a lot of you know we have a lot of thoughts on a lot of this stuff, but you know, I haven't played Fallout Four. I watched you play it for less time than you've played, like maybe twenty minutes. I'm like, ah, oh, cool. 
Yeah, I saw. Right. I watched you play through the intro, which is exactly what they showed at at QuakeCon. Yeah. So I'm like, I already saw this part. Except I already <laughs> had an EMB running. Oh, that's true. You did make it looked prettier on his machine. Yeah, it was a little less saturated and a little more contrasty. All right, so uh, you guys need to make more of these kinds of content. It's great. Yep. I miss this video. This I I reference this video all the time just because I think it's absolutely hysterical. Because we made this in like what four hours. Less than that, actually. The entire time from start to completion, I mean, completing the editing and everything was less than four hours. Or fewer than four hours, I should say. That's bad grammar. Um, yeah, fewer than four hours is what this took. I'd say it took, took me about 45 minutes to edit it, and I was editing like a madman because we had a lot of footage. But but we had a, you know, we once... We wrote this out. Yeah, we, yeah. Actually, we wrote this out while we were doing it. I think it was with the best part of it. Well, we, we went out and got a bunch of random shots of the city during the, the blizzard, and then we came back and wrote down everything we'd experienced so we could talk about it. And it worked out great. And I, skits are a big fun thing for me. I don't want to become channel super fun where you just like cuddle with hentai uh, pillows and stuff in the floor. But at the same time, I do like doing random, ridiculous stuff on the scale of Monty Python. Yeah. What made this video, I think, really... Uh... What made this video really special, other than it being a special report, is that we routinely had to deal with uh, this kind of news coverage when we were living in Florida. And every single time a hurricane came through, it was suddenly it was like, The world is ending! Ah! And we just... This kind of stuff. It was all of this. It was everything. That's all we pulled from. We pulled from all of that just to make fun of everything that Holy was going... Shit. What? DOS. I still is have that, that box. That's your Canon AE one. Yeah, I have that's both a, of that. That's and a shrink wrapped box of DOS. I have 5. that in box. You have it? I have it. Yeah. Uh, Half that stuff I still have. <laughs> Actually, I have all of that. I think I got that from Orville. I think the only thing I don't have is the uh, the keyboard. Uh, hmm. Uh, but yeah, I've got I've got all of that. Let's I'm, I'm weird. Anyway, yeah, it was it was fun. We were it, making fun of newscasters, it, and if you ever watch any kind of like national disaster. Uh, or not even national disaster, but the, the just shy of it. Any kind of uh, hurricane or like torrential downpour. Hey, super hey, hey, awesome. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, 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 let's not downplay this. People die in that shit. Well, I mean the ones that where they don't. You know, it's just like yeah, a, where it's like the wind is blowing and there's somebody standing outside being like, it's getting really windy. There's like uh, t I, I could uh, watch me drop this handkerchief. Oh, it flew about five feet. About five feet, everyone. We're all probably going to die. I, I think the ones that I found most uh, annoying is when you had uh, the newscaster standing out on a pier talking about how dangerous and terrible it is to stand there. We are risking our lives. And then guys are going, like, s surfing. And they're like, why are you going surfing? And the one I remember this one year, the surfer turned around and goes, why are you here? If this is so dangerous, why are you here? Like, well, we're reporting the news. It's like, no, you're making an ass of yourself. The dude was like, they cut away from him because he was making fun of the guy. Sting is like, you're standing out here in the oh, rain man. and talking about you know, how dangerous it is, but I'm going to go that. surfing. You know, I'm going to go live a little. Speaking of that kind of thing, my favorite thing about all the, the, whenever there's like the ridiculous like guy standing in a puddle that's obviously not really that, that, that really dangerous or whatever. My favorite part about all these like live coverage, sensational, almost clickbaity type things that are happening even though they're on the news I love all the stuff that happens in the background because you get all the people who are like school's out college is cancelled let's go pull down our board shorts and run amok in the background behind the news cameras yeah and the you're best. like you're like well there's cock and balls on television today <laughs> there it was and they cut Whoa. away and they cut away and you get people in like suits going <clears throat> hmm this is not Europe we, we're okay with violence but what the fuck was that Dangerous weather. Mm. It's raining. It's so oh. glad we're inside. Can't that believe... person out there is risking his life, standing in the rain. I can't believe we saw someone's body parts. I don't look at mine. Do you look at yours? Yeah, it's... <laughs> Ethereum hype from high... Talk about years. a segue from hell. That was one hell of a changing gears there. This is nifty, actually. I mean... Segway from hell? That's like the one that just slams you straight into the ground. Remember those malfunctioning it's ones? the one that Steve Jobs rode around on. Did he did slam him into the ground? No, no, I just know he was on a Segway. That and was if segue he wasn't to hell, not from. Oh, that's right. Um, this is at Wendell. We're answering a question at Wendell. That's fine. I was more interested in what he was talking about here. I just think we this should, is... we'll save this for another episode. But Ethereum here uh, is something pretty interesting we want to look at. I just, I just, I'm like, I don't actually have an answer to this. I'm more interested in just putting this here to 
reference this because like this looks actually very interesting. I want to dig more, uh, dig more into this. I want to play this video game. It looks cool. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, uh, it's a video game called Life. Mm-hmm. People go go check out um, Ethereum.org and um, we'll we'll look into this in the future. But yeah, it's worth a mention. All right, next up, what happened to Max from Max Hacks? Max He's from doing, Max Hacks is doing, doing Max doing. Hacks. Yeah. I gave I gave him all of his creative. I didn't like you know holding that mustache. Hold on, everybody. Hold on, everybody. That's a great still frame. That, Can we zoom in on that. <laughs> that mustache. Everybody hold the phone. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, it does, YouTube's funny about that kind of stuff. Max, uh, that's fine. Max, I just like the there? oversized play button there now. Max, what's happening with your mustache? It looks like he's about to like take his shirt off and do like full on old school boxing. <laughs> like, like that's what happened to Max. There he is, right there. Yeah, he's over here. His channel is Max Hacks, spelled just like Max Hacks. That's it. And you guys can go over there and watch him. He's got a few videos. He's been making more lately. So if you guys are curious about what he's doing, head on over there. Uh, he's having a... Seems like he's having a good old good old time. That mustache. Ladies. Ladies. That mustache. Look, there's room for two on that mustache. All right. So Logan's music production. This is a question for me. I can answer this. Uh, he sits around picking his nose. And then when he blows out air, it makes tunes. He goes, that sounds like a great sound. And he just starts... Program it. <laughs> I've got the most euphonious nostril ever. <laughs> no one's nostril can produce sounds like my nostril. They used to call me Nostradamus. <laughs> Give me that. I need that right now. Oh, God. Anyway, so your production... Try to swallow the goddamn whiskey. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a question here on the screen that I've forgotten about. He wants to know what I do. My DAW, audio interface, monitor sent, uh, MIDI gear, VSTs. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Murray and Joseph. That was not even... This, that was somewhere between uh, Wales and Scotland and Ireland. Jesus, Murray and Joseph. All right. So, all right. DAW, FL Studio. Quite like it. Um, it's got the fastest piano roll out there period and i think studio one has a pretty good piano roll too but i like the other interface of um fl studio better reason and all that kind of stuff none of them have a, even some of the really really fast like ableton and stuff none of those have a piano roll that can compete with fl studio that's the main reason i use it yeah just because i know people are going to ask when i mention this uh, lmms lmms is okay it's clunky compared to fl studio that's the problem and it, you know there was a point in time maybe three or four versions ago, where LMS was almost identical. Now, I, re- I remember when, when you first... Uh, it over there. Put it, I want to reach around you. Uh, when you, you when want to fir- reach around? I don't know. <laughs> Making my brain just die. <laughs> right, what were you going with this thing? Hope you guys are enjoying this. When you first started making this music oh so many years ago, um, I suggested you use LMMS. And I remember you... I, think I like LMMS. I think, I think you tried, and I think there's a couple of a uh, couple of songs from Ear Slayer that were actually made on LMMS. I did play around with it quite a bit, and you know, it was okay. I didn't. I, it was not amazing, and there's also some better options now uh, for Linux. LMMS has a, a similar a similar interface. It did at one point, but now it's sort of God. It's it's ugly. It's that's a big deal. Like when you're trying to work quickly, the interface being ugly makes it makes you move slower. I don't know, something about it. It's just ugly. You're just saying it's got a bad user interface. Yeah, it does. And also, it doesn't. it's not compatible with all my VSTs. And that's part of the next part of his question. Uh, so everyone always asks on Twitter and that sort of thing, what VSTs do I use? I heavily use the VSTs from TweakBench. TweakBench. Like, you're tweaking out and you're on a bench. That's what it is. So, like, Central Park. Central Park. They should just call it Central Park instead of TweakBench. But I guess they didn't. They wanted to be more uh, elusive and uh, what's the word I'm looking at here? Uh, subversive. So anyway, Tweakbench has tons of uh, 8-bit sounding VSTs to get some really awesome true 8-bit sounds. And fi- I use a lot of 5-bit sounds for like the guitars and stuff, like the really crunchy, like buzzy things. I use 5-bit VSTs for those. Um, but there's a, a paid program called Plug Chip Sounds. I use that quite a bit. Uh, and then as far as like a lot of the 80s like synth background music and stuff 
The Arturia V collection is like 300 bucks worth every penny of it. Um, it's just got a huge suite of sounds. And then I go in and tweak them a lot. Um, beyond that, I use just a, a few other random free VSTs. Magical 8-bit plugin is a really good one for 8-bit sound effects. Um, P8 something, P8. So there's some of there's, there's another 8-bit VST that I use a lot, but you can really do almost everything with those and a few effects. And then sometimes I run the 8-bit sound effects through like a guitar amp. And then well, I use a simulated guitar amp to give it like a really a little bit of a crunch. So I do that. Um, as far as the studio monitors go, I prim primarily use my Sony uh, 7506 headphones. They're really neutral with a slight bias towards the treble. I also use a pair of mono price studio headphones that sound really good. Like these things are the best for the money. Like that's, that's all there is to it. And as far as synthesizers go, I've got an Arturia uh, mini, I guess it's mini V lab or mini, mini something. It's just a little Arturia thing. And uh, I used to have an M audio 88 key keyboard, but I don't have room for it. So I got rid of it. I want to know as soon as we have room for it, I want another 88 key media keyboard. And on top of all that stuff, I have the Roland V drums, the V30, TD V30, something like that to be exact. And those are a really nice drum set. I usually, I usually use those through MIDI so that I can change the sound effects after the fact. I'm not making stuff that sounds like live music, so that's what I do. I get kind of nerdy about that kind of stuff, but uh, you asked. Any Raspberry Pi 2 or Raspberry Pi 0 coming out from you guys? Uh, like a NAS or a router, et cetera? No. No? It would be, be interesting to do some stuff with it. It would, but I, I just don't have... So far, I have not had the time to really delve into it because I don't. I haven't really touched Raspberry. I've never had a Raspberry Pi at all. I've had a couple, but you know, I, after I left Kentucky, I was like, "Where are those?" And Wendell's like, "I'm using them." Yeah. <laughs> like, damn it. Um, like, I've got a bunch of Arduino stuff, and I've got a bunch of uh, Edison stuff that uh, I, I want to get into making some stuff about. Do we got to do some home automation as soon as we get a place? That's, home automation, that's, Edison, and Arduino. I'm like, I have been hoarding this stuff, and it's just gonna be like, <laughs> now we can automate the shit out of this. Secret walls. Oh, what are you going to control it with? I'm just going to control it with my mind. You can wear one of the uh, EEG devi or EGG devices. No, exactly. EEG, I'm going to like, have like a thing hooked up to the back of my neck. It's going to run down. It's going to USB plug into my phone. And I'm just going to walk along. And then the wall is going to open up. Like, how did you do that? And I'm going to I'm install a, a little media device that plays a Star Trek WAV file from the original Star Trek series. Not the new one. Not the shh. It's going to be the shh. <laughs> and then we're going to create a series of high-pressure water cannons that are completely controlled via some kind of video motion con motion sensing They're facial look recognition. Like I mean, as far I'm as like, get, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna have them mounted up. They're gonna come up out of the lawn and just gonna push, blast. I'm like, what do you need to do? Water the lawn? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna order a pizza. <laughs> so you have like, you're gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna get a picture of the have... person. Is this person a target? Yes. <laughs> They're gonna have right, your lawn up. sprinklers look like. Machine guns. Why not? You think anyone's going to mess with my yard? <laughs> Especially if you just have them pop up and follow people for no reason. <laughs> I don't feel really uncomfortable when I jog here. You shouldn't be fucking jogging near my house then. <laughs> we live in the middle of nowhere. Why are you here? I do that happened once to me when I lived in the middle of nowhere in Vermont. I was We had like a glass shower. You remember that place, right? <laughs> yeah. The entire shower is a glass, and it's so you're like staying there, and you're bathing in like a pine forest, and it's like oh, I'm bathing in a pine forest. Yeah, on one side Vermont. you've got the shower head, another side you've got a glass wall, wall, and then it's glass. So you are standing in nature, bare all into nature. And I look over one day, and some. I'm gonna pretend she's attractive, but she was wearing the full-on headgear with goggles and like everything. This is skier. Yeah, some some girl just skied by. How do you know it was a girl? Hair. Okay. Oh, it was probably a stoner dude with long saying? hair. Just saying. I got long hair, man. It could have been me. Look, at the, She had hips like a woman. Could have been a man with a childbearing figure. Anyway, a skier just... Someone's going to get me on Twitter. You just wave. Yeah, I just waved. I turned around and waved my hands. <laughs> what do you know about I2P? Is it any good? Would you recommend it? I2P very shortly. <laughs> I actually have no idea what he's talking about. You haven't you know much about I2P? Uh, it's, it's, it's that time of night my brain's off. Um, I know I'm down with uh, OPP, but you know. 
Yeah, you know me. <laughs> Uh, there's no new thing. Um, here something. No somebody said something here. about PFSense or Ethernet or something. I don't know. Are you, any uh, any UI improvements that can be added to PFSense? Are there any UI improvements that can be added? This is one of those things where you like say like, "Hey, how can I do something with this video game?" And then like some jackass shows up and they and all the replies just good, good son. So for PFSense, good, good. Is there any UI improvements that can be added? To yes, pretty, all of them. It's pretty ugly. I mean, I mean, it's not. Whatever. But it's 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 not. It's not designed to be pretty. You're not supposed to be like, you know, I just want to wake up in the morning and open up my PFSense interface and stare at it for a while. I don't know. I think you log I mean, I do that when I was at work because I got a lot of information there. But I mean, a lot of the times it's... Log into it through the, through the command line. That's a, that's a UI improvement in my opinion. Um, I mean, it, but yeah, it's just, it's just it's, as long as you can get information, I think it could be scaled wider. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff you could do. I mean, it could have a, you know, you could build a, an interface... As long as the back end continued to work and you didn't break any of the firewall functionality, I don't think it'd be a big issue. But hmm. sure, all of them, all of the UI improvements could be added to PFSense. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> we maybe we should make a UI for PFSense because it does, it does, it's not pretty. I, I just want to make it darker and put our logo in the corner and then just say it's the uh, the TS Sense. <laughs> Subscribe. Oh, I bumped the thing. Uh -oh. I'll keep bumping it if you don't subscribe, but what I'm really <laughs> going to do, I'm going to hire a vertically challenged person that's just below your periphery. I'm going to hire him to follow you around with a big, like, big bottle of salve. Like the, maybe like a vapor rub or something like that. And every time you order a sandwich, as soon as you turn your head, he's going to cover your sandwich, like the inside of your sandwich, with salve. That's what's going to happen if you don't subscribe. So if you don't want salve in your mouth. This is why I subscribed years ago. Yeah, you didn't want to salve or the flavor. So but you're going to subscribe. Or else uh, there's going to be a vertically challenged person coming to you soon to salve the day. I hate you so much.